beautiful people. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today, oh my god, did you hear that big bang? They're like building houses next to us and I don't know what that was, but that was really loud. <laughs> um, anyways, today is going to be a day where I'm going to answer your questions whilst finishing off the rest of my makeup. I've just filmed first part to my foundation Friday for the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. So if it isn't already up, it's coming soon. But anyways, today I thought, whilst I finish off the rest of my makeup, because it will just be base products because I can't do anything on my eyes whilst I've got um, these like, individual lashes on, I thought I'd answer some questions that you've put on my um, giveaway video. So I'm not going to be able to answer all of them. I'm literally just going to flick through um, and just randomly pick some to answer. And I might do like a couple more parts of this or I might ask like on a community post for you to put certain um, questions that like you desperately want answering. So we'll see. We'll see how we get on anyways. But yeah, I've just finished off the base. I think I'm going to go in with my... Do I want concealer next? I think I'm going to go a bit of cream bronzer. So I'm going to go in with my Fenty cream bronzer in 03 Macchiato. Macchiato, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I'm going to see if I can come a little bit, ooh, a little bit closer as well. That might help. Oh, God. A little bit more as well. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go in with that with my um, Real Techniques Dua Fiber, Dua Fiber Face Brush and just build that up basically. So the first question that I can see is from some lovely person called Rose and she's asked what's the one thing that you cannot live without? I don't know if this means like in relation to family, like just in general life can't live without or if it means makeup. So I think I'll answer both. Um, the first thing that I probably would say I can't live without would be um, like family, friends, Blake, um, they're kind of the people that get me through so much, um, like absolute support network um, and I just feel like I wouldn't be the person that I am today without their support um, as well, so yeah, definitely that. In regards to makeup product, um, I could live without all of it to be honest, it'd be nice to maybe have a bit of bronzer or I don't know. I'd live without all of it. It doesn't really bother me all that much, <laughs> to be honest. Natasha has asked, does it get stressful for you doing all this and how do you manage it? So I'm guessing it means in regards to YouTube um, and stuff like that. So if you aren't kind of familiar with my channel, because I know I have been getting quite a few of new subscribers recently, but if you aren't familiar with my channel, I do um, obviously YouTube as a hobby. I earn like a tiny little bit of money off it, like tiny little bit of money not enough to like pay my bills or anything well not even enough to pay like my car <laughs> um like it's literally pennies that I earn um and she means I think she means in regards to how to do YouTube I also work in um four days a week because I've recently had to cut my hours down because I was at risk of being made redundant um and also I've been at uni and training up to be a therapist um it does get really stressful I'm not gonna lie the month of August has really really tested me um and that was me uploading every single day has been draining it's got to the last like 10 days of it and I'm like I don't care no more <laughs> absolutely exhausted um so I actually, when I'm filming this, it's still in August, but I actually can't wait for August to be over for that reason, because I think I pushed myself a bit too much and it's making me doubt a little bit what it's gonna be like when I um, do Vlogtober, because when I do Vlogtober, I'll be back at uni, whereas when I've done August, like Vlogist, I'm not at uni. I had like one kind of reset that I had to do, like a role play reset. But apart from that, I haven't really been at uni. I've just kind of been working. So I think in October, having working, also learning all the therapies as well, because I'm getting trained in like CBT, learning all the therapies, and then I'll start picking up my own clients as well and be getting shadowed and um, having to kind of start filming stuff to put in for um, my exams and stuff. Because we have to put in like a video of us with like an actual client to see that we're doing our therapies and stuff correct. So I think that is gonna be a bit too much for me. So I do, I'm kind of contemplating maybe doing just an upload every two days in like Vlogtober, which is what I did last year because I was working full time last year and it was, a, it was a struggle. I literally had like a week off before Vlogtober and filmed all my videos for Vlogtober. So in regards to me managing it, 
I planned ahead, like I planned so much for vlog um, for vloggist because I had to. There was like no other way, where's that sponge gone? There's like no other way around it, I had to plan. Where's it? I've lost my sponge. Oh, it's behind my microphone. <laughs> I had to plan for um for vloggist because like I work and, and I'm doing other things. Um, I've also been trying to work out as much as possible as well. I got all my measurements done again on Saturday, which will all have been done by now, um, by the time that you've watched this video. But I've been trying to work out, like last week I managed to do five workouts, which I don't know how I managed to do that. Whilst I was doing vloggers and working and just trying to breathe and just prepare for my reset as well. Like it was just, I think last week it, it, it really drained me. So yeah, I'm, that's, I'm not really managing. <laughs> to be honest but the ways that I do manage is by planning ahead which is something that's new to me I never ever used to do it for my YouTube which is why I never really uploaded consistently so every month I will plan the next month's videos ahead of time and start like filming them before we go into that month so that I have videos kind of backlogged as well but anyways I think I have to spoke forever for that question but if you want me to do like a full video on how to plan my YouTube stuff and manage my time and stuff I'm the worst person to possibly do that video because I'm an absolute procrastinator but if you want me to do that video let me know down below in the comments because I'll do that for you. What's the most expensive thing you've broken? Um, Broken like completely or just kind of damaged it, you have to get it fixed, that kind of stuff. If it was like damaged it, had to get it fixed, it'd probably be my old car. Um. I'm just getting some concealer. So I'm going to go in with my absolute fave. This will be in my monthly favourites from August as well. And this is the Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Concealer. Way better than the original one. Like, way, way, way better. <laughs> oh my god, I've just dropped some of my shorts. So the next question, whilst I'm rubbing my, um, my shorts <laughs> with the makeup wipe, is how many siblings do you have? And is anyone as talented like you in makeup? I'm guessing you mean in relation to my siblings. Um, I'll tell you about my siblings first because there's actually quite a, quite a lot of us, to be honest. So long story short, I was the only child. So there's like my mum and my dad and then there's me. I'm the only child that's from my mum and my dad combined, if that makes sense. So I was the only child until I got to like first year of secondary school, so like year seven. And then my dad had a little girl with his ex-wife, who obviously were married at the time. And they had Megan. Megan is now 13. She's absolutely lovely. I don't see her as much as what I'd like to, because I don't really go, like see my dad as much as what I'd like to as well. And when I before I kind of moved in with Blake and his family, I lived with my mum. So obviously I only lived with my mum and like my mum's daughter like my other sister so I didn't get to see like Megan and my other siblings as much as what I would like to so obviously they had Megan and then my mum fell pregnant with her ex-partner and my dad wife fell pregnant again so they both had kids and literally like a month and a little bit or maybe just a short of a month month and a little bit apart age-wise so I've got a nine-year-old sister with my mum and her ex-partner and then I've also got a nine-year-old brother with my dad and his ex-wife, if that makes sense. So yeah, really, really close birthdays. Millie's a little bit older than Oliver. So Millie is my mum's and Oliver is my dad's and his ex-wife. Still still getting it? Still understand? Okay, there's more. So my mum's um, ex-partner who she had Millie with also had a daughter from a previous relationship. And I've like... My mum and her ex-partner had been together since I was like nine. They've been together for like years, over 10 years. Yeah, way over 10 years because I'm. they've only just split up in the past couple of years. And they've got an, um, he had a, a oh my God, I can't even spit out myself. He had a, a daughter from a previous relationship that I've literally grew up with and she is literally my sister, even though technically she's not nothing biologically to me. She's my sister, like... It is what it is. She's my sister. I grew up with her. She's my sister. So Beth's 19 and Beth has a YouTube channel. I will leave it linked down below. Hopefully I remember because I'm really bad at remembering to do stuff like that. But Beth is actually a makeup artist. So Beth is ridiculously talented at makeup and loads better than me at makeup. Like next level better than me at makeup. So yeah, she is based like in the Middlesbrough area. If you ever want to do makeup done by her, I'll leave her Instagram and stuff down below as well if I remember, hopefully I do. So yeah, that's Beth. So Beth is like the oldest sister that I've got. So she's 19. Then we have Megan who's 13. Then we have Oliver and Millie who are nine. And then my dad has a little girl with his current partner, um, fiance, um, Steph. 
So Steph and my dad have a little girl called Georgie. She's my only ginger sibling. She's absolutely adorable. I absolutely love her so much. So yeah, there's Georgie as well, who's a little baby. And I think, I think I probably will end up with another sibling somewhere along the line <laughs> as well. So it's gone from me being an only child up until like first year of secondary school to all of a sudden having all of these siblings as well. And I wouldn't change it at all. I, I actually... I enjoyed being an only child, don't get me wrong, it was amazing. But when my dad kind of had Megan, I still felt like an only child because I was at my mum's. I'd like to see my dad on the weekend and I'd be at my mum's obviously due in the week. So like Monday to Friday, it was like I was an only child still. And then obviously when I went to my dad's at the weekend, that's when I was like, oh yeah, I have a sister <laughs> as well. So obviously it wasn't until my mum had Millie that I started feeling like what it was like to have a sibling that you lived with because obviously I only saw like my dad and Megan and stuff on the weekends. So yeah, that's all my siblings and um, Beth is definitely more talented than me. Megan is actually really talented at doing makeup as well. Um, some of the looks that she's done on like, TikTok is amazing, especially the little cloud one that she did, really, really good. So yeah, they are really good, um, better than me. <laughs> what is the best brand you love for foundation? I think possibly, like the one foundation that's never really let me down is the MAC Studio Fix, but I haven't really tried, you know, any of their other foundations to be like, oh, that's definitely the best brand. So I don't know, I feel like I'm I'm lacking in that department. I think when it comes to drugstore, I think from kind of reviews and what I've saw people rave about. It seems like Rimmel does really well. So I'm gonna set my eyes with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish um, Powder in Fair whilst answering Laura's question. So Laura has said, how do you deal with tough times? 2020 has hit me hard and you are such a bright beacon of light and I really look up to you. I'd love some advice on how to stay motivated and positive because you seem to be very good at it. Um, First of all, Thank you so much. That is actually really nice. And do you know what's actually funny? Obviously, you said about me being like a, a, a bright beacon of light. My name actually means light, like sun as well. I just thought, I always love, the, I love the, the meaning behind my name. So I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> but yeah, that's a little fun fact for you as well. So how do you deal with tough times? To be honest, I was going to leave my phone as a mirror then. To be honest with you, I... I don't know. I had obviously counselling last year, which was really, really helpful. I find that I kind of assess how I'm feeling a lot. So I try to keep track of like what's going on and how I'm feeling as much as I possibly can to kind of read my body. Like if my body needs a break, I will give my body a break, regardless whether that's going to impact like obviously it's going to have a huge impact on stuff. Like I wouldn't give myself a my body a break and like miss work or like without having like like being ill or a sick no or something or like generally struggling with my mental health but I can, if I can feel that I need a break I'll factor that in. I also manage my time a lot by my calendar and my phone. I feel like that powder's got a lot darker. I feel like the need to do like a lighter one. I love the powder but I feel like the need to do like a, a lighter version of it so you can use it underneath your eyes. I do feel like I have to organise my time quite a lot in my calendar on my phone so like if, say for instance and I learnt this from kind of reflecting back last year when I was doing my counselling and stuff I overcommit myself to people to please people and I think I do it a lot for YouTube as well like I overcommit to YouTube to please people but then I also find that a lot of it I can't stick to which then lets people's people down which is what I'm trying to avoid by overcommitting if that makes sense so yeah in regards to kind of tough times because I think I like I feel like I just went off on a tangent in regards to tough times definitely um Take time out for yourself, make sure that you're prioritising you because if you're trying to look after everybody else and you're drained from that or trying to be like that rock for everybody else, soon you, you do naturally start to crumble because obviously you're exhausted and you're no good to anybody or to yourself when you're absolutely drained and exhausted. So take the time out to plan your energy for things that you want to do and things that you have to do. Basically like do it like that or if you do need some support you are really struggling reach out for some mental health support i'm not ashamed to say that i went to counseling last year look after yourself speak to people about how you're feeling reach out to services for some support but make sure that you're looking at where you're putting your energy and is that draining you 
look back on your week, right, okay, so this, I did this, this, and this, and this, by this day, I was absolutely exhausted, or by this day, I noticed my mental health started dipping, right, okay, what was the lead up to that, and then start looking back, and be like, actually, yeah, maybe, I'm doing, like, for me, I was doing too much, and I was committing myself too much to, to stuff, and then would feel really bad if I was, like, cancelling plans of people, and saying, look, I'm really exhausted, can we, do this another time and then I'd try and squeeze them in for like the next week which would just be the same situation again and just so on and so on and it was just a bad cycle to be honest that I was stuck in. Sounds like I, sorry, it sounds like I've div divved myself a little bit of CBT without even realising that that's what that was but yeah. <laughs> I'm just going in with my MAC um, Minimize Skin Finish in Dark Tan for my bronzer. I hope I answered your question because I do feel like I've just went off on a proper tangent but yeah. There you go. <laughs> I've got a question from Solar Wolf, which says, when you're planning a giveaway, what are your thoughts on it? And why do you make giveaways? When I'm planning a giveaway, I think, would this prize excite me? And has it got a big enough thing in it to be something that I'd be like, oh yeah, I definitely want to follow this channel to, to win this because this prize looks really good. So I always think like, is it even a good prize? That's one of the things that I try to do. So I've tried to balance it out with, little stuff and big stuff just so that it's got a little va va to it if that makes sense. I do giveaways to give back to you guys because I know that a lot of you comment on my stuff saying like can I have this, can I have this and it's that's just it would just be like unrealistic for me to be able to manage that so I do giveaways to to um, obviously give back to you guys and to say thank you for, for all of your support but I'm not gonna lie I also do giveaways to attract new subscribers because I'm really small on YouTube it brings people to my channel and if they want to stay, then they can stay. If they don't want to stay, then they can leave. So that's one of the reasons that I like to do it, is to attract somebody to my channel and then they can make the choice on whether they think it's worthwhile sticking around and joining me on my little journey or not. So yeah, that's, I'm just gonna be honest with you. <laughs> that's just how it is. <laughs> so Karel, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, um, has said, what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting a makeup channel? My advice would be to be organized. I feel like I've missed out on kind of expanding my YouTube journey a lot because of not being organised. I'm just going to grab a blusher. I'm going to go for a mix of two blushes from Tarte just because I fancy it. And we've got this shade Surprised, if I can open it, which just looks like this. And then we also have the shade Sincere, which is a bit more of a brownie one and sparkly. I'm just going to mix them two together to be honest and just apply with just a cheap brush that I got off eBay. So my advice would be would definitely be to be organised because I think with YouTube one of the key things to help you to grow is consistency um, and I think if you kind of and I used to do this and I still was doing it like t this year I was still doing it as well it's only really been lockdown that's made me realize like actually you need to change your game with this so what I would normally do is I'd have maybe a break from YouTube and then I'd be like okay right I'm ready for back for YouTube I'm like one of my eyelashes are there we go I'm like all right I'm ready I'm ready to come back and I'd jump straight back into it and I'd start filming it and I'd upload that video straight away instead of sitting and being like right okay and I could start right now but if I started next month and planned and recorded all my videos now for next month, it means next month I can start on the month after and I'll always be a month ahead of myself because I found, um, especially if obviously for most people when they start off it's going to be a hobby and they're going to be having some kind of job or at uni or college or whatever they're doing on the side um, as well. So I think for that, you need to kind of be aware of the fact that you're not going to be able to have all the time in the world to do YouTube like what full-time YouTubers do because you aren't a full-time YouTuber unless you already have that, that spare time, which is amazing. But even if you do, I would still... Look at me shouting at you. Even if you do, <laughs> I would still plan ahead because you never know what life might throw in the way. In the way. Mine has stopped and started so many times and now I'm actually gonna I'm literally gonna give it my all and if it doesn't work out then I'm either just gonna stick to it and upload whenever I fancy it and just take it more as just generally a hobby and not something that I want to kind of build on or what I'll do is I'll put my all into it and maybe get somewhere and maybe have it as a little side hustle whilst building my career in psychology at the same time as well so yeah I think definitely put the planning, planning, put the planning, <laughs> put some planning into it, really think ahead, what do you want your channel to be, what was your, what would your niche be, 
if you want to do makeup, is there a certain part of makeup that you want to do? Do you want to be just tutorials? Do you want to be like a mix of everything? I feel like I haven't really found my niche, to be honest with you. I feel like I just do a mix of everything, which probably doesn't really help my channel out because I think if I niche down and kind of focused on what I wanted to do and just did them kind of videos, then I probably would grow a bit better. But I don't know what I want to niche down to. And I enjoy doing everything, to be honest with you. I have just kind of focused more on makeup recently than anything else. Instead of kind of being a mix of like lifestyle and weight loss and blah, blah, blah. I've just kind of focused on, on makeup and I'll probably start doing more vlogs soon as well now that the vloggers is over and done with because I just did not have the time and energy to whack a camera out whilst also filming and editing 31 videos and uploading them and sharing them and thumbnails and tags and all the stuff that comes alongside it so yeah that would be my, my one of my recommendations to plan ahead consistency maybe focus more so on the lighting of your um videos than necessarily the equipment and um, like as in regards to cameras and stuff fill on your phone but just have mint lighting and that'll pay off for highlighter i'm gonna go in with a mix of doll beauty i have the doll beauty and um, shine bright and like a diamond and i'm literally just gonna mix them two the two together so trin studies has asked what have you been doing to keep yourself entertained throughout lockdown so throughout lockdown you'll have noticed if you've been subscribed for a little while i wasn't uploading videos like maybe one or two that I'd actually pre-filmed but in lockdown I um was working my service didn't close down we all just started working from home we're still working from home now so I've never stopped working I've been working the whole time through lockdown I really wish that I was in a place where I could have like been furloughed because I could I literally could have just ploughed or managing time into YouTube which would have would have actually been unbelievable but unfortunately I couldn't because like I'm a mental health service people need support and we could work from home so why not so yeah we've all been working from home I also did if one of my like uni modules from home as well so I did like home learning I did a presentation from home which was weird I also moved house I did like a full update video which I'll leave linked down below if you want to know more about what's kind of been happening in lockdown because I moved house twice <laughs> as well so yeah I'll leave that linked all down below if you do want to go check that out so I'm gonna put some of the Anastasia um like dip brow pomade I think that's what it's called in the shade what are we medium brown through my brows whilst answering Isabel's question which is what is the best but cheap micellar water that you would recommend personally the best kind of just general micellar water that I've um found is the Garnier one I just think it's just really simple really easy and really really good to be honest Fran Chis Francesca 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 I'm sorry if I've pronounced that wrong I am really bad at pronouncing things asked what is your favorite eyeshadow palette at the moment I haven't since I've had these lashes on to be honest with you I've not been putting any eyeshadow on because it ruins the lashes and makes well yeah it ruins the lashes because you have to then wash them which then can make them naturally fall out as well so yeah I haven't really been reaching for any eyeshadow palettes recently but I'm not gonna lie the one that like I naturally just want to kind of reach for is is a Jeffree Star one and I don't know how I feel about everything that's going on with Jeffree Star I always want to reach for the the bloodlust one I don't know if it's because I spent so much money on it I think it's because I love I've actually realized I love purple eyeshadows which wasn't something that I like knew before I didn't realize that I love purple I think it's because it makes my green eyes pop as well like it just goes really really nicely so yeah that is probably one of the ones that I've been loving at the moment or any Anastasia Beverly Hills one because I just absolutely love <laughs> their palettes. The next question actually links into what I've just been talking about. So this is by Amandine, I believe. So they've asked, would you still buy Jeffree Star makeup considering all the drama that he was in? <sighs> I don't know. I put this on, if you're not involved in our little um, Facebook group, Lucy's Ladies, definitely go check it out because I put a picture of his new Orgy palette in there and said like, what are your thoughts on it? And like obviously just Jeffree Star like in general and stuff. And I don't like, I'm definitely, I don't know, like, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm definitely, obviously, not going to go around and bin all my stuff that I've got because I've paid money for it, so I'm going to get my use out of it. But in regards to kind of buying future products, I don't really know how, I don't think I would. I don't really know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. How do you feel about it? I think that Orgy palette was quite a lot of very similar shades in one huge palette. It could have been, like, half the size. And I think it needed some, like, shimmery, like, stuff in it as well, not just 
completely plain nudes. I feel like he should have incorporated some like shimmers or glitters, especially some of the formulas that I used in that Budlust palette, like bringing some of them like shimmery, glittery ones in, I think would have just made it pop so much more. I feel like it's just very, I don't know, all like same colory, if that makes sense, but like just tiny little bit of differences. And I feel like, unless you're like a makeup artist, I don't really feel like you'd, you'd benefit from all them slightly different coloured shades. I don't know. So I, really, I was really looking forward to him bringing out a nude palette is what I was waiting for. I kind of got sucked in for the hype of like the Bloodlust one, which I'm so glad that I did because I really do like that palette. But I was waiting for his nude one to come out and I thought as soon as he brings out a nude palette, like I'm going to jump on that. And I just, I looked at it and it just didn't really, it didn't tickle my pickle. I don't know. I don't know how I felt about it. I, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so for lips, I think I'm gonna try this combination. I don't think I've ever tried it before. This is the MAC Nice and Spicy Lip Liner, and I'm gonna try it with the MAC Bottom Friend Cream Sheen Lipstick. So the next question from Daniela is, how did you start to learn about makeup and any tips for the newbies? I'm not gonna lie, I literally started learning about makeup from watching YouTube videos. Yeah, that combination is not the one. It's like British Chav edition. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna try to fix it with the Toast Lip Liner from Barry M. So yeah, I've literally learned how I do makeup through watching YouTube videos. I've never done like a course or... I'm gonna try, I'm still in the process of trying to fix this. I'm gonna try put some of the Revolution I Heart um, Lip Gloss on in Salted Caramel because it is a bit of a dark colour. There we go. Oh, it smells amazing, this. I think that may have saved the day. And really my tips for newbies would be literally just to to look at tutorials on YouTube. I've got a full playlist of tutorials and stuff if you want to go check that one out. There we go, that looks a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, definitely would just look at YouTube. If you want to go to like college and stuff like that, then look into what local co colleges have or local makeup artists, what kind of courses they do. Because a lot of your local makeup artists, you can book like a one day course of them. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes you, from what I've heard and from other people's experiences, you probably will learn a lot more by booking with one of your um, local makeup artists for a day than what you probably would go into college for a full year. No tea, no shade. <laughs> but I just found that my, like, from, like, for my sister, for instance, like, she learned so much from just, you like, from just play, like, playing around with makeup herself than what she did when she was at college, and she's unbelievable. So I just think, like, it just, you don't have to go to do a course to do it, and you don't have to, like, do a course to have makeup as a job or to do YouTube or anything like that. So I just think if you can learn it yourself, then just absolutely learn it yourself and save some money. Or if you have a little bit of money, go to your, mo like, local makeup artist and book some time out with them to kind of learn how to do it on a model or learn how to do it on yourself. You're just wanting to improve your own makeup skills. But YouTube is a free tool. Use it. That's what we're here for. <laughs> This is the finished look. I really hope you enjoyed it. That highlighter is popping. I don't even know if you can see this on camera. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please, it, oh my God, please leave some more comments down below of questions that you like desperately want me to answer and I'll answer them in another video. That's all right. Love you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget I upload on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays, six o'clock UK time. Love you so much. Goodbye guys.